Tonight on Hunter. The money in the bag. That's the boy. Looks like he's graduated to murder. Something happened at the warehouse yesterday. I want to know what's going on. We almost shot each other. I don't see there's any harm in you talking to the departmental psychologist. What do you mean, me bring it up? Why didn't you bring it up? Because I didn't think you wanted to bring it up. You still haven't told me what you're talking about. today not here you want to bet the money in the bag come on hurry hurry up come on what do you want I want a cheeseburger and a large soda. Any fries? No, pass. I'm buying. I'll take a large order. <laughs> you know, you're the Jack Benny of fast food. <laughs> All units in the vicinity of 1 Adam 29, possible to 11 there now. Maolin Market, 10th and Alameda, code 2 high. That's four blocks from here. Let's take it. <laughs> Hurry up! Take it and go! Our boy. Back up's behind us. Let's take him.
around to the back and try to flush him toward us. Check. Check the van. See anything down here? If you go left, I'll go right. Watch your step. What are you doing? I thought you were gonna go left. I heard a noise behind you. You heard a noise? That was me. You heard me. This place is like an echo chamber. What's up? You see him? What do you mean, what's up? Did I see him? Didn't you see him? No, not a trace. What's that? I'll go out the back way. What a day it's been, huh? Followed him into a warehouse and I heard this noise and I doubled back and... He must have gotten by me. Would you get a license of the car he was driving? It'll be in the report, Captain. Excuse me, Sergeant Hunter. They just found your car. It was left abandoned a couple miles from the warehouse. Abandoned? That'll be in the report as well, Captain. Captain Devane? Lieutenant Malone, nice to see you. Your captain said you were on your way down. Lieutenant Malone, this is Sergeant Hunter and McCall. Lieutenant, how are you? Good to see you. Rick, it's been a long time. McCall? Lieutenant? Hunter and I worked a case together three years ago. Yeah, but she wasn't a lieutenant then. Well, I had a few lucky breaks. Oh, well, I think it was a little bit more than luck. Lieutenant Malone's been working at Hollenbeck in the robbery division. Her captain called this morning and said they may be looking for this guy. His name's Mick Stryber. He hits lotto places Wednesdays and Saturdays when there's been a big score. Up until now, that's as bad as it's been. Well, McCall and I got a pretty good look at our guy. Is this him? That's the boy. Looks like your boy's graduated the murder. I want to take this opportunity to apologize to you for what happened in the warehouse yesterday. It was uh, it's a big misunderstanding. I'm very sorry. No problem. Oh, Megan sent over all of her information on Striver. How considerate of her. Is uh, something bothering you? Just making a statement. You know, I think we're going to need some help on this Stryber case. I was thinking about asking Lieutenant Malone to join us. She's been working on this Stryber case for, what, two months now when she hasn't gotten the guy? So I think we can just read her reports. What do you think? Well, I disagree. I think that uh, 
Lieutenant Malone's a very good police officer, and we do need all the help we can get on this case. That's right. That's right. I'm going to talk to her captain. Good, Joe. Thanks. What's going on with you? There's nothing going on with me. Can't I have a different opinion other than yours without it becoming a big deal here? I just asked a question. It sounded more like an inquisition to me. Well, maybe you're not listening to me clearly. I suppose like yesterday. Look, I didn't say that. That's exactly what you're thinking. Well, you know, come to think of it, it was a very standard tactical procedure that you blew yesterday. What are you talking about? Standard tactical procedure, right. I'll go in this way, you go in that way. That's textbook strategy right there. Look, let's not discuss it, okay? Fine. Drop it. Good. Honor, McCall. Come in here. All right. You two have been fighting like a couple of alley cats. What's going on? Oh, there's nothing going on. Oh, crap. I want you both to sit down. All right, I read your report, and whatever this is, it has nothing to do with losing that car. Something happened at the warehouse yesterday. I want to know what it is. Look, all we had is a little miscommunication at the warehouse, that's all. We almost shot each other. I see. All right, I want you to listen to me. Consider this. If you had actually fired shots yesterday, you'd be required by departmental policy to see the psychiatrist. Yeah, you see, we didn't do that. Obviously you didn't do it, thank God. But I don't see there's any harm in you talking to the departmental psychologist. We're fine. It doesn't look that way to me. Now, I need you two to be focused. Look, I cannot speak for you. But I am just as focused as I have ever been. So, with all due respect, Captain, this is something that I'm just not interested in, okay? Well, me either. I think you are both making a big mistake. Well, we have a lot of work to do on the Stryber case. So. Something is wrong here. Yeah. Don't worry. We'll figure it out. I hope so. How long have you two been partners? Almost six years now. That's a long time to be together. Things must be pretty good between you two. Yeah, for the most part they are. This isn't exactly a nine-to-five job, so occasionally you do get on each other's nerves. That could be happening now. Maybe that's all it is. You think so? Do you think so? <sighs> you don't make this very easy, do you? <laughs> Sometimes it isn't. At the warehouse, when you came around that corner, Tell me how you felt when you saw Hunter with his gun pointed at you. Describe the moment. Well, it's just like everything goes into slow motion. My heart was really pounding and, and my finger was just starting to pull down on the trigger and we just came around the corner. We, we saw each other, we, we froze, you know. You just... And in that instant, one of you could have died. Yeah. But sometimes things like that do happen. That is part of the job. It's what happened afterwards. It was... We had gone back to the crime scene, and we are doing our job just like we always do. And up steps this Lieutenant Malone from robbery, who just completely takes over. And that bothered you. Well, yes, it bothered me. I, I'm just standing there, and all of a sudden, she and Hunter are just talking up a storm, and, oh, remember this, and then all about these old times, and I felt like I, I, I felt like I wasn't even there. Well, the lieutenant's a woman. Right, yeah, she's a woman, but that's not really the issue here. It's, you see, this is the second time this has happened. Tell me about the first time. 
Well, I, I don't know. It's, I don't think it's that important. It may be. It won't hurt to tell me. Well, it was three years ago. I'd just gotten back from the six-week training course that the FBI gives over at Quantico. I walk in, and there's Hunter with Megan sitting at my desk. And they're both very wrapped up in the D'Angelo case, which, by the way, was mine mm -hmm. before I left. I talked to a friend in the DA's office. The warrants are no problem. You do such good work. Oh, hi, McCall. Welcome back. Hi. I was just on my way back from the airport, and I figured I'd stop by. Yeah. Uh, Megan Malone, D.D. McCall. Hi. Hello. Rick, we don't want to be late for the DA's. Oh, you're right. Our case is the uh, D'Angelo case. D'Angelo case? Okay. I thought that was thrown out in the rain then. We reopened it. Yeah, we got some new leads. Listen, we'll take care of this. Uh, why don't you go home and relax? relax. Uh, change your clothes. How did you feel about that? I felt left out. It was like... I wasn't even there. He wasn't glad to see me. Or I just... I felt very left out. It seems to me that you and Sergeant Hunter have some unfinished business. This is a pretty safe place to talk about it. Would you be willing to talk with him here? Well, me? Well, yeah, but he would never come in here. People change. <laughs> Keep it in mind. Anyway, our time is up. I'd like us to keep talking. You game for another appointment? Yeah, I guess so. Good. Same time tomorrow? Yes. Thanks. Hello. I'm Norman Tate. Dr. Tate, how are you? Have you ever been to a therapist before? Uh, no. You see, there's uh, nothing that a shrink can do for me that a good game of golf can't. <laughs> You're pretty emphatic about that. Does being here bother you? No. Now, look, uh, Dr. Tate. I'm sure you're a very good doctor, helped many, many people. I'm here because my partner has a problem with us. Therefore, I have a problem with us. Now, I'm here to try to make some sense of it, try to solve the problem. Uh -huh. Now, normally, she's quite reasonable about these things, but lately it's become, well... You're afraid it's going to get in the way of your work. You're right. You've been partners for six years. Maybe you two are on burnout. Yeah, I don't think so. Has she ever been like this before? No. No. Except for the D'Angelo case. What happened in the D'Angelo case? That was the year that McCall took the FBI's forensic course at Quantico, Virginia. Another detective was temporarily assigned as my partner. And who was that? Megan Malone. How did that work out? Well, Sergeant Malone had a knack for making things happen. Which explains one of the reasons she's a lieutenant today. Well, I think McCall felt guilty about being away. I mean, especially after we had opened up the D'Angelo case. That was her case. As a matter of fact, I had to talk her into taking some time off. McCall, it's good to see you. You're finally back. Well, no one knows the D'Angelo case better than I do. Well, you know what? Uh, Megan has some interesting points on that case. Why don't you fill her in? Oh, no, you go ahead. I mean, I think Dee Dee should know where the case has gone. Well, all right. Now, your theory was that D'Angelo killed his partner, Clay, because Clay found out that D'Angelo was embezzling from their company, right? Right. Well, that, I mean, excuse me, it wasn't the case at all. You see, Clay found out that D'Angelo had a mistress. Now, D'Angelo's wife was the one in the family with the money, and he couldn't afford a divorce, so Clay was blackmailing him. Well, that's a very interesting angle. Do you have any proof? She's working on that right now. Great. What is it? Dr. Tate, do you think Sergeant McCall could be behaving this way out of professional jealousy? 
How so? Well, I mean, Megan did solve a case she couldn't. It's possible. It does strike me as more than just coincidental that Megan was around both times you noticed your partner acting strangely. Would you and McCall consider talking about this together? You could do it here. You're not going to get her to come in here, Doc. Not in a million years. Where you been? The hospital seeing you sick, friend. Well, come on, we got a lead on a guy who might take us to where Stryber is. How's your friend doing? He's doing just fine. What's wrong with him? Got a bad liver. Had to take it out. What do you mean they had to take it out? Just what I said. He has a bad liver. They had to take it out. You can't remove somebody's liver. We don't even care. We do it all the time. Medicine can do incredible things now. What are you, crazy? Medical science has proven that you cannot live without your liver. Yeah, so what are you now, a surgeon general? Okay, they didn't take his liver out at all. They took everything out except a little piece of it about that big. He now has a liver the size of a hamster, okay? There's our guy. Earl Bingham? Who wants to know? I do. How much longer is this going to go on? Until I get some answers. I don't know how many different ways I can tell you. I ain't seen Stryber in months. That's not good enough, Earl. Hey, I want to see a lawyer. I got my rights. All right, I'll get you an attorney. But I'm not through with you yet. Any luck? No, not yet. You heard? Yeah, I did. I found out something that might help. You mind if I have a crack at it? Go ahead. Sure. One of you don't look like my lawyer. You're not going to need one. We're cutting you loose. Good. On your way out, say hi to an old acquaintance of yours out there, a fence named Rivera. We picked him up, told him someone had snitched him off. You think it's me? Especially after I tell him it was. You're bluffing. Then call it. Go ahead. Walk. Stryber's got a girl named Susie at the Malabar Arms in Montebello. I've been there, and that's all I know. You're a regular encyclopedia, Earl. Very nice. She's good, isn't she? Yeah, well, it does pay to have inside information, doesn't it? Very nice. Thanks. Let's go find this Susie. We might get something, like Stryber. Good idea. You know what? I just remembered I've got a dentist appointment. So let me just cancel it and I'll be right with you. That's okay. Hunter and I can handle it. No, it's a loose filling. It's no. You know, that's a good idea. Why don't, why don't you go to the dentist, get your stuff taken care of, and we'll fill you in a little bit later on. Come on. Please open up. Hey, I didn't do anything. No, but you know somebody who has. I don't know him. Look, Stryber is a killer. You don't want to be hooked up with him, Susie. 
No, I don't need some cop coming in here and telling me who my friends are. You said you didn't know him. Get out of here. You help him. You'll go down with him as an accessory. You think about that. Hmm? If you see Stryber, give me a call. I feel like I should have gone with them instead of coming here. I just don't know that this is really doing an awful lot of good. I see some progress already. Really? It's just seeing Megan again. It felt like three years ago. The uh, D'Angelo case, wasn't it? Yeah, right. And you know, even then, she was on the fast track. See, we knew that D'Angelo had killed his partner, so she wanted to set a trap for him. So she picked up D'Angelo's account and a man by the name of Glazer. Now, I didn't think that this man was of any value to us at all. But We've got him cooling his heels in interrogation room one. I questioned Glazer months ago. I don't really think he's of any use to us. Well, the information Megan has proves that Glazer was helping D'Angelo funnel money to his mistress. What really happened was that Glazer told Clay about D'Angelo's bad habits. Yeah, and he used that information to make about a couple hundred thousand dollars. Which means we can put the squeeze on Glazer. He's going to look like an accomplice to murder. Well, Glazer knows who I am, so why don't I take the first shot at him? You've been away for six weeks. Why don't you just rest, relax, come along for the ride? I think Megan and I have this thing handled. Come on. And now it's happening all over again. Yeah. You know, I'm sitting here listening to myself babbling on and on, and this is terrible. I sound like somebody who's so jealous. Are you jealous of Megan? I don't think so. I don't know. I mean, it's not like me to be envious of somebody just because they get ahead. That's an interesting phrase, just because. Do you think there could be another reason why you feel jealous? No. <sighs> no. Anything I can help you with? Okay, Pops. Fill it up. And don't forget the lottery money. Come on! Hurry! Okay, okay! You're sure? Yeah, that's him, all right. How is he? Well, he's tough. He's going to be okay. He did identify the man as Stryber. The owner wounded the suspect just like he said. There's a trail of blood going out the door. He was able to drive himself away. We should notify all the emergency rooms and clinics in the area. Well, I don't think this guy's going to just stroll into a hospital. Yeah, I agree. We're looking for a street man who can make house calls. Yeah, you're probably right. Follow up on it. Yeah. Hello? That's me. Where are you? The usual place. You know that doc you told me about? Get him. Get him fast. Who is it? Rydell. Susie sent me. Let yourself in. I get paid in advance. One anesthetic. <laughs> well, if you change your mind, you just yell. <coughs> Diddy? You just got a call from a Dr. Tate. He wants you to call him. Dr. Tate? Gee, would, would that be the department psychiatrist? I just made an inquiry. Uh, 
an inquiry. That that inquiry wouldn't be yesterday's dental appointment, now, would it? How do you know that Dr. Tate is the department psychiatrist? That's common knowledge. Really? Yeah. Even though he's filling in for the regular psychiatrist who's on vacation? I'm very well informed. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. How's your friend's liver? I'm sorry my phone message let the cat out of the bag. But I'm very glad you decided to come here and work this out together. You know, it's interesting. You both chose to discuss the same events. In particular, the first time you worked with Megan Malone. Why is that, do you think? You talked about Megan Malone? Yeah. What's the big deal? <laughs> it's not a big deal. I just didn't think she was that important to you. Yeah, she's not that important to me. Wait, wait. We might get further if we pick up where you left off last time, Dee Dee. Uh, yeah, where was that? You said D'Angelo's accountant, Glazer, rolled over on his boss. Yeah, I remember that. You Please, see? I'd like Dee Dee to finish the story. Well, uh, Megan had this idea to put a wire on Glazer, try to squeeze some money out of D'Angelo the same way that Clay did. We were going to be sitting in the surveillance van and we'd be listening to everything. I personally did not think it was a very good idea, but nobody seemed very interested in what I had to say on the matter. It's your call, Vic. I can tell the police the whole story, or you can make it worth my while not to. I don't believe you're doing this, Mitch. Yeah, well, times are tough. You're the last person I ever figured to sell me out. I thought loyalty... This from a man who killed his partner. He didn't care about anything but money. I bankrolled our operation, and he turned on me. Now we're getting somewhere. So you killed him. Because he was scum. That's it. Let's go in. No, 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 wait. You are my friend. Let's, let's see where this goes. You're just like him. What are you doing? Let go. What is this? A wire? I ought to kill you. It's going sour. We're moving in. Hunter, get in there now. Well, what happened? Did you save Glazer? Well, I jumped in just as D'Angelo was wrapping a light cord around Glazer's neck. Glazer threatened to sue the department. You're right, but, uh... The D.A. cut him a deal, so we kind of forgot about it. I must say, we handled that case pretty well. Why don't you tell him what happened afterwards? Oh, yeah, the press found out about it somehow. Somehow? They made a big deal of it, as the press will do. The situation is that Megan got all the credit for the bust. And today she's a lieutenant. How do you feel about that, Dee Dee? Well... You know, we did a lot of work on this case together. I'm not saying that she didn't deserve her promotion. <laughs> what does that mean? You see, it's all clear to me now. This whole thing is about you being jealous of Megan Malone. What? I am not jealous of her. Yeah, you are. What is it with you? What, are you asleep or what? Oh, what are you talking about? You know exactly what I'm talking about. Think back for just a minute. Think back to what happened three years ago. Okay, I'm thinking. Now he gets it. I... N nothing ever happened between Megan Malone and me. I don't care if it... This is not about Megan. This is about after what happened, I leave for six weeks, I come back, and I needed to talk to you. I couldn't. There you were with Megan everywhere you went. You both were together. I needed to talk to you. I needed to connect with you after what happened. After what happened? Oh, just a second, please. Look, I called you twice a week. All you ever talked about was Quantico this, Quantico that, your work. You never once brought it up. Bring what up? Well, you know, on the phone, you didn't exactly sound like you... Wait a minute, what do you mean me bring it up? Why didn't you bring it up? Because I didn't think you wanted to bring it up. Why wouldn't I want to talk about I it? I have no idea. <sighs> you see? See? Why is it that a woman always has to carry the ball in an emotional involvement? You still haven't told me what you're talking about. All right, I'll tell him. After... Before I left for Quantico... We slept together.
Do either of you want to talk about it? It just sort of happened. Did he? Yeah, it just happened. We had been, well, we were both working kind of hard, especially McCall. She was getting ready for a trip and all. It was her wedding anniversary, and she seemed a little down, so I thought I might take her out to dinner. We started the evening off talking about Steve. That was her late husband. He was killing the line of duty some years ago. It seemed to help. And by the end of the evening, she was talking about her trip to Quantico, and her mood was really up. We were having a lot of fun that night. We didn't want it to stop. So when uh, so I took her home, dropped her off, she invited me in for a cup of coffee. Came inside and we talked. Talked more than most married people do. And just this once, it all seemed to hit me. It hit her too. The next morning, you left for Quantico. Yeah. How did you feel? Great. I felt great. Didn't even bother me that I was leaving town the next morning. It was really nice having him, having you there in the morning, and, you know, waking up together. And, I knew that this wasn't going to be a pattern or anything. That was probably the only time that that would happen. But still, it was, it was very special. So then what happened? Well, then he made me breakfast. <laughs> it was a fabulous breakfast. <laughs> Except for the eggs. It was... Did you two talk about it? No. What about later? You never talked about it? No, and I wish we had. I don't know. At the time, I guess, I felt that nothing needed to be said. Maybe we were both just too afraid to say anything. I was busy packing for the airport. Probably conveniently busy, you know what I mean? And he helped me pack, and we drove to the airport. We kissed goodbye, and I left. And six weeks later, I walk in, and I see you with Megan, who's sitting at my desk. I mean, I felt like I was looking at my replacement. And you didn't even seem to care that I was back or that I was even there. Well, that's not true. Well, but that's the way I felt. Well, but you know I never meant that. And after Megan left, well, after she left, it was just like you know, we turned the clock back. It was as if it never happened at all. Except it did happen. What about you, Rick? How did you feel? I thought about it a lot. No, no. I asked you how you felt. I felt great. I thought it was terrific. I'm glad it happened. I'm 
But as time went on, I just pushed it aside. Look, what happened between us evolved. I just didn't think it needed to be explained at the time. And then the more time that went by, the more I pushed it away, the more I... The more I got afraid of looking at it. I didn't want to risk losing my friendship with her. I didn't want to lose my partner. Excuse me, that's the emergency line. Yes. Okay, I'll tell them. That was for you. Lieutenant Malone wants to see you right away. The surveillance paid off. Susie's on the move. She's on foot, carrying a suitcase. She's going to strike. Fantastic. Here's the phone list, Joanna. Thank you. What's that? I was right. Susie called this sleazebag ex-paramedic named Rydell. Well, we can follow that up later. She's leading us now to Stryver. You know, I don't think so. I think this suitcase deal is one of the oldest tricks in the book. So what do you suggest? I think we gotta sweat Rydell and we gotta do it now. I think she's right. We should go for Rydell. You know, after all this work, you could miss the bus. Oh, well, I don't think so. Okay, I'll keep my people on Susie. Thanks, Lieutenant. Come on. Okay, what's going on here? How bad you want to stay out of jail, right, Dell? Hey, why don't you go check it out? I'll call in. Be in the manager's office. One William, one fifty-six. We are at Olympic in Crenshaw, code six. Roger that, 56. One William, 156, we are in foot pursuit of suspects and back up immediately. Hunter? Now, there's backup. Look, I got an idea. Okay, got it? Got Go. it.
Megan? DD? You won't have me on your back anymore. I didn't think of you as on my back. Thank you. I learned a lot. I learned a lot about myself by working with you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Lieutenant. Good luck, guys. Well, where would you like to go to get some deed to figure out what we're going to put in this report? I'm not really hungry. Why don't we just do the report and drop me off at my house? Okay. Quite a week. Glad this case is over with. <laughs> Me too. Look, I, I want to apologize to you again. I this should have never have happened. I uh, this is a monumental blunder on my part, and I should have confronted the issue from the outset. I had my part in it too, though. You know. I apologize. I'm sorry. Look, we have to make a pact that anything like this ever happens again, we speak up immediately. Absolutely. No matter what it is, no matter what comes up, confront it and talk about it right then, okay? Absolutely. That's a deal. Deal. Okay. Want to come in for coffee? Tonight on Hunter. The money in the bag. That's the boy. Looks like he's graduated to murder. Something happened at the warehouse yesterday. I want to know what's going on. We almost shot each other. I don't see there's any harm in you talking to the departmental psychologist. What do you mean me bring it up? Why didn't you bring it up? Because I didn't think you wanted to bring it up. You still haven't told me what you're talking about.
Got any winners today? Not here. Come on, bet. The money in the bag. Come on, hurry. Hurry up, come on. What do you want? I want a cheeseburger and a large soda. Any fries? No, pass. I'm buying. I'll take a large order. <laughs> you know, you're the Jack Benny of fast food. <laughs> All units in the vicinity of 1 Adam 29, possible to 11 there now. Maolin Market, 10th and Alameda, code 2 high. That's four blocks from here. Let's take it. <laughs> Hurry up! Take it and go! Our boy. Back up's behind us. Let's take him. the back and try to flush him toward us. Check. Check the van. See anything down here? If you go left, I'll go right. Watch your step.
What are you doing? I thought you were gonna go left. I heard a noise behind you. You heard a noise? That was me. You heard me. This place is like an echo chamber. What's up? Did you see him? What do you mean, what's up? Did I see him? Didn't you see him? No, not a trace. What's that? Maybe I'll go out the back way. What a day it's been, huh? Followed him into a warehouse and I heard this noise and I doubled back and... You must have gotten by me. Would you get a license of the car he was driving? It'll be in the report, Captain. Excuse me, Sergeant Hunter. They just found your car. It was left abandoned a couple miles from the warehouse. Abandoned? That'll be in the report as well, Captain. Captain Devane? Lieutenant Malone, nice to see you. Your captain said you were on your way down. Lieutenant Malone, this is Sergeant Hunter and McCall. Lieutenant, how are you? Good to see you. Rick, it's been a long time. McCall, Lieutenant. Hunter and I worked a case together three years ago. Yeah, but she wasn't a lieutenant then. Well, I had a few lucky breaks. Oh, well, I think it was a little bit more than luck. Lieutenant Malone's been working at Hollenbeck in the robbery division. Her captain called this morning and said they may be looking for this guy. His name's Mick Stryber. He hits a lot of places Wednesdays and Saturdays when there's been a big score. Up until now, that's as bad as it's been. Well, McCall and I got a pretty good look at our guy. Is this him? That's the boy. Looks like your boy's graduated the murder. I want to take this opportunity to apologize to you for what happened in the warehouse yesterday. It was, uh, it was a big misunderstanding. I'm very sorry. No problem. Oh, Megan sent over all of her information on Striver. How considerate of her. Is uh, something bothering you? Just making a statement. You know, I think we're going to need some help on this Stryber case. I was thinking about asking Lieutenant Malone to join us. She's been working on this Stryber case for, what, two months now and she hasn't gotten the guy? So I think we can just read her reports. What do you think? Well, I disagree. I think that uh, Lieutenant Malone's a very good police officer and we do need all the help we can get on this case. That's right. That's right. I'm going to talk to her captain. Good, Joe. Thanks. What's going on with you? There's nothing going on with me. Can't I have a different opinion other than yours without it becoming a big deal here? I just asked a question. It sounded more like an inquisition to me. Well, maybe you're not listening to me clearly. I suppose like yesterday. Look, I didn't say that. It's exactly what you're thinking. Well, you know, come to think of it, it was a very standard tactical procedure that you blew yesterday. What are you talking about? Standard tactical procedure, right. I'll go in this way, you go in that way. That's textbook strategy right there. Look, let's not discuss it, okay? Fine. Drop it. Good. Hunter, McCall. Come in here. All right. You two have been fighting like a couple of alley cats. What's going on? Oh, there's nothing going on. Oh, crap. I want you both to sit down. All right, I read your report, and whatever this is, it has nothing to do with losing that car. Something happened at the warehouse yesterday. I want to know what it is. Look, all we had is a little miscommunication at the warehouse, that's all. We almost shot each other. I see. All right, I want you to listen to me. Consider this. If you had actually fired shots yesterday, you'd be required by departmental policy to see the psychiatrist. Yeah, you see, we didn't do that. Obviously you didn't do it, thank God. But I don't see there's any harm in you talking to the departmental psychologist. 
We're fine. It doesn't look that way to me. Now, I need you two to be focused. Look. I cannot speak for you, but I am just as focused as I have ever been. So, with all due respect, Captain, this is something that I'm just not interested in, okay? Well, me either. I think you are both making a big mistake. Well, we have a lot of work to do on the Stryber case. So. Something is wrong here. Yeah. Don't worry. We'll figure it out. I hope so. How long have you two been partners? Almost six years now. That's a long time to be together. Things must be pretty good between you two. Yeah, for the most part they are. This isn't exactly a nine-to-five job, so... occasionally you do get on each other's nerves. That could be happening now. Maybe that's all it is. You think so? Do you think so? You don't make this very easy, do you? Sometimes it isn't. At the warehouse, when you came around that corner, tell me how you felt when you saw Hunter with his gun pointed at you. Describe the moment. Well, it's just like everything goes into slow motion. My heart was really pounding, and, and my finger was just starting to pull down on the trigger, and we just came around the corner. We, we saw each other. We, we froze. You know, you just... And in that instant, one of you could have died. Yeah. But sometimes things like that do happen. That is part of the job. It's what happened afterwards that was... We had gone back to the crime scene, and we are doing our job just like we always do. And up steps this Lieutenant Malone from robbery, 